All right. So Loom, what is Loom? Uh, first of all, Loom is a platform that lets you do s screen recordings. Uh, there are other similar platforms like Screencast-O-Matic, uh, Screencastify. Uh, Loom is also a web-based application. You can download a desktop application. Uh, and one thing that's pretty nice, and we'll talk about this, is Loom has a free pro account for teachers. Um, so what are some of the benefits of async using asynchronous video in teaching? Well, first of all, doing something like this, synchronous, there's a lot of opportunity for tech issues. Like you guys saw, it was like things were not as smooth as I was hoping. But um, so having an asynchronous video is nice because you can record it ahead of time. You can get things done exactly the way that you want, and then you can share it with everybody, and they can view it kind of whenever they want. That's one major benefit is students are able to view the video at any time. They can go back and review and access it in the future for review. Um, and why should you create your videos rather than finding something online? So when you, you create the videos, first of all, it's you know it's going to be exactly the way that you want it. And also it offers your students a sense of familiarity because they know you. And so that makes things nice. Just some quick tips for when you're recording videos. It doesn't have to be fancy. Uh, you don't need to really overproduce your videos. You don't have to use a bunch of editing software to be successful. Now, if you want, you can, you can do those things, but it does add a pretty considerable amount of time to making videos, which already takes a pretty considerable amount of time because you have to get everything prepped. Which is why in my second point, I recommend only doing a few lessons or demonstrations, like start small, because uh, they do take a, a significant amount of time. Generally, you want to try and keep your videos uh, short and sweet. I would recommend nothing more than really like between 10 and 15 minutes, because we know that students' uh, attention span is not super, super long. And especially when it's some sort of like educational video, it's hard to keep them engaged for much longer than that. Um, outlining or scripting your videos beforehand helps keep the flow of your video and also helps you minimize the number of mistakes that you'll have when recording. And if your video is like scripted, that could help if you wanted to do video, video editing because you can just cut at a certain point and whatnot. Uh, my recommendation is use a microphone and have good lighting. Like a microphone like this, which is just like the headset from my um, iPod or from my from my phone is better than the internal microphone that you would have on your computer, at least from the distance that you're that you're at. And then lastly, practice. The more you practice, the better you'll get at it, and the more comfortable you'll be when doing screen recordings. So, in order to use Loom, you don't really need a whole lot. Uh, you just need something that you want to record and share. And then there are two different uh, ways that you can use Loom. There's a Google Chrome extension, and it only works in Google Chrome, unfortunately. So if you're like a Safari or Mozilla Firefox user, you're going to need to use Google Chrome for the extension. Or they have a desktop application. Uh, the desktop application is available on, for both Mac and PC. And the desktop application does have some additional features, some extra features that you won't find on the Chrome extension. One thing that's pretty nice about Loom is students can use the Chrome extension with their Chromebook because, um, again, it's just an extension. So they can install the extension and do screen recordings themselves if you needed them to like present a presentation or something to you during a distance learning time. Um, and then there's some getting started, like pro features and some stuff like this. And then we'll get to that in a second. So I want to um, kind of show you guys how to actually use Loom and do a recording. And I'm going to show you both with the desk, desktop application and then also with the uh, Chrome extension. So the first thing I'm going to do is the Chrome extension. So if you click on this link, it will take you to the extension, uh, to where you would go to install the extension. So you just click on it, and you can click there, and it'll take you to the, the Chrome web store. And once you do that, you'll get you'll see this icon here. 
it's this this icon, but it's just in your extensions. So if you click on it, it pops up the recorder. And then you can see like I get my video down here in the bottom corner. You can choose either record your screen, the screen itself and the camera at the same time, uh, the screen only. If you choose to record only the screen, it gives you an option to put like your picture here if you don't like want your live video. Uh, and that would be in this option where it says use photo for screen only. You can toggle that on or off. And then cam only. Now, one thing to note about cam only, it looks like it's this tiny little circle down here that's recording. But when you actually get the video, it'll be a big full full screen, like full recording. So it won't just be that tiny circle that records. It'll actually be like your normal full webcam view. But it will only show you this little circle view when you're recording. So I'm going to record my uh, screen and cam at the same time. And then from here, you have the option to record either the full desktop or your current tab. Now, one note is if you record the full desktop uh, using the Chrome extension, if you, you record something outside of Chrome, you will lose your video feed. You'll lose your video feed. And I'll show you, like, if you wanted to record, like, a PowerPoint, you would not have this, um, the little talking head. Uh, there's also this flip camera. And what that does, so if you, you can see my text is backwards here. So like if you had something that you wanted to show them and you wanted them to be able to read, you need to make sure that you choose the flip camera option unchecked. If you uncheck it, it will read normally. So I'm going to record uh, my full desktop and I'm going to just kind of walk through the PowerPoint and show you that this thing goes away. So if I choose to start recording and I want to do my entire screen, choose to share. So it'll give you a little countdown. And as long as I'm in Chrome, this will stay here. Uh, these three buttons, so this check mark says you're done with your Loom recording. This pause button will pause your recording. So you are paused. And then in order to resume, you just hit resume and it'll now pick up where you were. And then this cancel recording does exactly that. It cancels it, it doesn't stop it. It just like deletes the entire recording. Uh, you can hide these menus by clicking on these three dots. And then there's different size options for this little talking head thing. So I'm going to go with this little one. Now, if I were to open up a PowerPoint, um, you'll see that this recording is going, this little talking head is going to go away, even though it's recording my full desktop. So if I were to pull up this and I wanted to present this, and I wanted to now record over this, which I could, right? So it's still recording, but I'm just not showing up in the video. So if I now get out of it and I go back to my Chrome browser, I'm still there. So if you want to record something on your desktop, I recommend using the desktop app. Um, so then you would just click finish recording and it automatically will take it into Loom where you get some editing features. Um, I'll talk more about the actual like Loom uh website and the how you would share the videos from there but does anybody have any questions about the extension this chrome extension no um no? it seems like uh i'm wondering if you download it on your desktop how much space does it work i have a macbook air and it seems like on the desktop, you have more functionality than the... You definitely do. You have a lot more functionality on the desktop. And actually, uh, they're very, um, they're clearly Mac users because they have some added features that are only on available on Mac as well. So like there's more functionality on the Windows desktop version than it is on the Chrome extension, but even the Mac, the Mac desktop version has even more features than the Windows. Those other features I think are coming to Windows, but it's they're working. They it, they made it better for Mac first, and then they're kind of working their way through desk, uh, the other one. Let me see if okay. work. So, oh, Dana asks if I'm using a microphone on my earpods or that I have a desk mic. I do have a desk mic, so I have one here, and that's what I'm using in uh, here in. My meet recording, you can see it's recording through my 
my desk, my desk mic. So I teach a hybrid online class. And so I made like 250 videos or something for my hybrid class. So I invested in like a good microphone. This is, I have my headphones in so that I don't get a bunch of echo. That's more why I'm using headphones here. Um, would, would you say there are more features on Zoom than on the green Castify extension? Uh, on Loom? Yes, I mean on Loom, <laughs> not Zoom. Uh, yes. One thing that, that Loom is missing that Screencastify has is direct import to Google Drive. But in Loom, you can download your video and then just upload it to Google Drive at that point. Um, but, but Loom def definitely does have more features, I think, than Screencastify, especially through if you have the desktop app. Okay, thanks. Uh, Mike, yes, you do have you do have um, access to my pr slides in my presentation. I have a bit.ly link that I will throw up there and show you in a minute. Uh, there are drawing tools in Loom through the desktop app, through the desktop app. So I'll show you, do you guys wanna see the desktop app now? Yeah, I'll show you the desktop app, okay. So once you download the desktop app, it is the same, the same symbol, that little flower looking thing. So if you open the Loom desktop app, you do have a bit, uh, again, I'm using the, I'm using a Mac. So I have a little bit more functionality. Um, in a Mac, you can actually select a custom size. So like you can select where you want on your screen to record. So let me go back to this. So if I'm using this here, right? And I want to choose a custom size. I can like select this part of my screen to record and anything that I do outside of that won't be recorded. So that's one thing. And then once you're uh, doing your recording, you have, it's going to do the countdown, three, two, We can't hear you. Muted my mic. Sorry, it muted my microphone because it was trying to use it for the other one. I tested this too, and then it didn't do that last time. Let me see if I can. So there are some drawing tools when you do when you do it on the desktop app. The drawing tools, they don't stay there the whole time. Like the drawings don't stay there. They are just kind of to point stuff out and then they kind of disappear. They disappear after um, a little bit. Um, another couple features with Loom is you can choose if you have the desktop app on the PC, you can record up to 1020 or 1080p. Uh, the, the Chrome extension only records up to 720p, but the, on the Windows version, it records, yeah, just drawing like a Telestrator. Uh, on Windows, it records up to 1080p. On Mac, you can record up to 4K. So if you have like a 4K display, you can record 4K video on that. Uh, and again, you have the options for uh, screen and cam. Screen only, cam only. There are some, uh, so you can kind of, you can kind of do that, like what I'm doing right now. Um, but you have to make sure that if you want to like record to students, you need to make sure. So what happened with me is my microphone turned off because it was trying to access my microphone through Loom. You can run them simultaneously. I've done that before, but it is not as, it, you have to make sure that all your settings are right. Um, in the, in the uh, preferences here, you have, you can like set your default quality so that it always records in a certain quality. Again, you have your flip camera option. Um, for the desktop, you can have it highlight mouse clicks. 
So when you turn that on, basically you get like a yellow circle around your mouse. And every time you click the, the mouse like blinks like this, so that it can kind of signal where you're, um, where you're clicking. And then there are some shortcuts for like starting and stopping your video and such. So I'm going to, so again, you can record full screen, you can record a specific window and then it lets you choose the window or you can just, uh, in Mac, you can record a custom little, little spot. So let me go back. Here is, uh, in this, in this slides, there are some links here that you guys have access to. And then let me open it up for some questions. And then I'll go and show you guys what the editing features look like in the actual um, Loom website. So does anybody have any questions at this point about this tool? Aaron, do you have any examples of, um, besides a session, just um, when, one's uh, lessons you've done using this? Not using Loom. Not yet, okay. I haven't, I haven't used Loom as much as other things. For when I, uh, when I record my own videos, I use a separate screen, a screen recorder that has, it has a built-in video editor. So I use that for a little bit more editing features. But this is a great one for like quick and easy videos. Um, and it's nice because then you can have like your little talking head in the videos as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there was another question. Uh, will we be able to access your PowerPoint yet later? Yes, I'm gonna share the bit.ly link with you in, um, in a little bit. Um, other questions? Can you use Loom with a document camera? Uh, if you had the document camera hooked up to video feed on your computer, then I guess, yes, you could. Uh, one kind of hack that I've been doing for a document camera and during this time is I've just been using my phone. I've been opening up like a Google Meet and then I will join the Google Meet from my phone as well, and then I can present from my phone, and um, then I can use the camera from my phone and it can act like a document camera. So basically I would be in the same Google Meet twice, and this would be my camera, and then you can basically just record your screen from there. Yeah, so it depends, on you just need to, Okay, so I, I teach a hybrid pre-calculus. So someone asked what subject I teach my hybrid class. It's a hybrid pre-calculus class. Um, and to do that, I use, so I, um, I have some crazy setup. Hold on one second. I have this thing, it's a big old drawing tablet that I use that I can like write and annotate on a note taking app and like with OneNote or Notability if you're a Mac user. Uh, and that's how I make my videos. And my videos have like me live scribing on, on there. I'm gonna stop my sh stop sharing. Um, so that was someone's question was asking how I do that. Uh, let me scroll down. Uh, so, so Mich uh, Michelle, that's how I, for, for math, that's how I write on my screen. Um, Andy Loom does have an iPad app. And if you, if you're using an iPad or the iOS app, basically, it won't let you record your video, like your face and what's on your screen at the same time. You can only record one or the other. Uh, is this thing like a Surface Pro? No, this is just a display. Basically, it's a touchscreen display that has pen input and you just plug it in through a um, through an HDMI cable into your computer 
it's more money than you would probably want to spend on it, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, it was not cheap. It's made by, uh, well, they sell, they sell, there are some that are not as expensive. This is made by Wacom. This is a Wacom Cintiq. Uh, they retail for about $600. Yeah. They're really designed more for like artists and people in graphics and people who do a lot of video editing. Yes, you can. Uh, oh, what can this do that a Surface Pro can't? Nothing. Surface Pro can do more than this because this is literally just a display with pen, pen input. Uh, maybe the only thing that this can do more than a Surface would be it has probably a little finer control with a pen tool. So if you were using like Photoshop or something like that, it has uh, more pressure sensitivity and stuff like that than probably your Surface Pro would. Other questions about the about Loom. Okay, so I want to go and look at. I'm going to record my. I'm going to share my screen again, and I'm going to take a look at the once you once you have made your videos, where it goes, and what your options are in those videos. So I'm going to present my screen again and go here. Um, so once you've recorded your videos, it automatically sends your videos straight to this Loom website, and you can see that. I have three videos on here. One of them I used to answer some questions about video recording. Uh, actually, Jane, she was just asking some questions in here. I was answering some questions she had. And then we have these other two recordings. Someone just asked a question. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna show you how to upload to Canvas. Um, you can actually just embed your video straight into Canvas. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So when you get into uh, when it shares your your recording here on Loom, you have some options. So it brings you into this editor. You can trim your video. So when you click trim, what that allows you to do is it allows you to cut out certain parts of your video. So maybe you didn't like the beginning because it was all the setup. And so you can um, highlight, I want this part to be removed. So it, remove that part. So now when I play the video, it starts at the beginning and then it skips that little part that I trimmed. And then you can click publish changes or you can undo and you can adjust your trimming after that. So if you want to, uh, you can like trim out all, and you can be more specific with times by using these here. Um, Another thing that you can do is you can add what's a, called a call to action button. So basically, if you add this, it's a button that you can say like click here and then you can upload a URL. You can change like the color of the button. You can make it change the text. You can change the style to be like square or rounded. And what that does is it allow like if you had a presentation that you wanted them to look at, they could just click on that and it would take them to the presentation when the video is playing. Now this call to action button only shows when uh, you hover over the video, when you hover over the video. One thing that's also pretty cool about Loom is you see these emojis down here. Basically, viewers who are watching can react and you get a time stamped reaction to your video when they use these. Uh, and you can enable these or you can disable them and that's just in the settings. So in the settings, that's these emoji reactions. If you turn them off, they won't have access to them or you can turn them on. You can turn comments on and off. Um, if you want your, so the thumbnail is basically what they see when they're just, when they get sent the link to the video before they're watching it. So you can make it an animated GIF. You can kind of see that in the back, how it's like going like this. That's the animated GIF thumbnail. A uh, viewer can download. So if you want the person who's viewing the video to be able to download the video, or if you don't want it, you would have to untoggle this. And then analytics would be like how many views and things they could see that. So I usually, uh, if I don't want my video being like distributed across the internet, I would uncheck viewer can download and then hit save. Now, if you personally want to download it because you want to upload to YouTube or something, you can just download your video there and you can upload straight to YouTube. Uh, or 
you can upload it to Google Drive and wherever else you would share your app. Um, share your video, sorry. You can do link sharing. So you can make, make it so that only people with the link can view your video or you can make it public. And basically people can search for it and they can find it. Uh, if you do link sharing, you can just copy the link and send it through Canvas or through email like that. Uh, you can also make your um, video a little bit more secure by only sharing it with people through email and you can add a password. So if you want someone to be able to access the video, but you want it to be password protected, you could add a password. Now, how would you embed this in Canvas? Someone asked about how you can embed it in Canvas. So you could just copy the link and share the link to someone in Canvas this way, or you can actually embed into Canvas in like an assignment. So let me go to Canvas and just, I'll create a dummy assignment here. So if I'm in my Canvas course, and let's just make a new assignment. So we'll call this uh, test assignment so embed here. So if I want to embed it in there, basically I go to my video, and then you can click on this share button. You can share it like Gmail will just send you the Gmail, Facebook, Twitter, but you would choose this embed option. So you click embed. Uh, responsive means that your video will adjust to the size of the display. And fixed size means that it will stay at that video size the whole time. So if you want it to be a adjustable to someone's screen, you can choose that. You would just copy this code. And then in the Canvas assignment, you can't just paste it here because that's going to paste all this nonsense. You have to go into the HTML editor and just put it in the line that you want. And then when you paste it, now when you go back to the rich content editor, you can see there it is. And so if I were to save this, my video is there. And what's kind of cool is you still have those emoji reactions. So you they can still react. So like I can and see how it's it's like time stamped. And then you can add your name if you want. Uh, thumbs down and stuff like that. So then, and you see these reactions and they and other people can see them as well, I believe, as part of the analytics. So that's how you would, how you can upload and embed to Canvas. All right, um, let me look at some questions. We're using Google Meet right now, correct, yes. Loom is not the same as Google Meet. Google, Loom is to record a lesson ahead of time and share with students so that you, this is for asynchronous video, not for synchronous video. Uh, yes, Heather, you can embed the Loom video literally anywhere that you would embed, or anywhere you have access to the rich content editor. So that would be pages, um, assignments, um, announcements, anywhere that you can like type out what you normally would in a, um, in like that box. So if you guys would like at this time, uh, here, I'll, let me send you, I'm in the chat right now. I am sending, I just sent out the bit.ly link to the uh, presentation. So that's the link to the presentation. Mike, do you mean uh, the embed media button in Canvas to embed the video? I believe you can. Let me double check that. I think you can just take the share link um, and embed that that way. Let me let me try that. I'm assuming that's what you're talking about, right, Mike? It is not a hyperlink. Yeah, you'd have to copy and paste. Okay, let me let me try sharing my screen to show that. So I'm back here in my that assignment that I just made. I will delete this video. So this is the embedded video that I just had. I'm, I've deleted it. Let me go back to my loom. So share, uh, let me 
copy this link. Let me see if it works. I don't know. If I paste it in. So it doesn't look like it's going to work that way. Um, I think this is more for like direct links to URLs. Whereas this share button, this link will share to this web page. It shares to this web page. So I think that's why that's not going to work that way. Um, so you would want to use the embed code if you want to embed it into Canvas from this. So you'd go share, embed, and then copy the embed code. Does that answer your question, Mike? OK. Uh, if you guys want, you can unmute and ask questions at this time. Uh, and I will just try and answer questions you guys have about this. Aaron, somebody had had suggested that I could use the document camera maybe and just do that as a full screen. Would that work? <laughs> um, so you'd have to, in order to use Loom, you'd have to have your document camera hooked up to your computer somehow. Yeah. And then be feeding the video that way. And then if you did that, then yeah, you could just record your full desktop and um, then you could record whatever's on your document camera. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? I had one more. Yeah. Can I record, is it, it seems like it would, this would not be the tool to use to record a certain amount of audio for specific slides. Like if you wanted them to be able to. No. Yeah. This is more uh, recording like a, a whole presentation. This isn't what you would use to like embed audio into a slide. It would be more what you would do to record like a whole presentation. And then you would have that one link to share for the whole presentation. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And Aaron, this would be good for a presentation where you want to kind of have them see your screen or maybe do a. Um, um a powerpoint or um, yeah in the video like you know now one one that. thing that here's one thing that i would caution you against uh i would caution you against using a any screen recording tool to record a video like to record a video playing from youtube or something um, because if you then try and post that somewhere, there are potentials for copyright infringement and your video could be flagged and you won't be able to use it. Uh, or you could just get, if if the user did find that you had recorded this, you know, they could sue you for copyright or just ask you to take the video down because of copyright infringement. So I wouldn't use it to like record a YouTube video, to be honest. Um, because there's p potential like legal ramifications for that. Any other questions? Um, yes, yeah, that's the probably what I would do is have them um, view the video themselves. Yeah, I mean, if someone says that you can use their video, then by for sure you can include a video into your presentation. One thing that I what I didn't show you is when you are, if you're going to record video and you want the sound to come through your recording, your Loom recording, you need to do that through the desktop application. So one of the features in the, one of the preferences in the desktop application is to allow you to record system audio and you're not able to do that through the Chrome extension. So if you do want to use, even if you're recording something on the internet, like something in a internet presentation, you're going to want to use the desktop application so that you can get that, um, system audio and that way it's not trying to just um that way it's not trying to just send you're not trying to pick up the audio through like a microphone uh so this this tool is different from playposit in that playposit is a place where you upload a video 
and then students have a ch an opportunity to answer and react to it. They can like answer uh, questions, multiple choice questions, or answer for your response questions. Whereas this tool is more just a screen recorder and it's for you to then share this video, the full video that you've been recording with your students. It's not a place to necessarily like make. So what you could do is you could like record a presentation using Loom and then upload it into PlayPosit if you want your kids to react for that. Uh, how do you know you're, you have a desktop version? So you'd have to download the desktop version. Um, basically, so in my presentation, there are, let me share it again. Uh, in my presentation, there are links to, there are links to the Chrome extension, and then there are links to the de desktop application. If you're going to be using the Chrome extension, you're going to be clicking the button when you're in Chrome, you're going to be clicking this button. If you're using the desktop application, you're going to be opening an application in uh, on your desktop to record. So for me, it would look it would be this button here. And so the difference is where you're accessing it from. If you're accessing it from within Google Chrome, you're using the Chrome extension. If you're accessing it within um, from your like applications on your computer, then you would be using the desktop application. Uh, I did record this presentation, yes. Are there directions to uploading in Canvas in my presentation that I shared? No, I can add that though. I will add that. I will make a quick, I'll make a quick recording and I'll post that recording in my presentation. Um, I will, I don't know exactly, I don't know if Chris Long wants to like have a list of where all the recorded sessions will be. But what I might do is maybe I'll, um, once once the recording is done processing, I will post the link to the recording at the end of this presentation. So I'll just post a link to the Google Drive file. 